Good evening. I'm Reverend Judith, and it is my pleasure to welcome you to Circle Sanctuary's Beloved Dead Full Moon Circle. At this solemn time of year, when it is said that the veil is thinnest between the living world and that of our ancestors and guiding spirits, we call to them and welcome them to join our circle this evening. At the spinal harvest of the year, and as the old year draws to a close and the new one begins, we give thanks for all of the blessings that we have received throughout this past year. And we pray for all those who have experienced struggles and some death. As the wheel of the year cycles around again, may this new year bring peace and prosperity for us all. It is now my honor and pleasure to introduce our High Priestess and Senior Minister, Reverend Selena Fox. Thank you, Reverend Judith. Saw when tide is flowing, ancient ways of knowing. Saw when tide is growing, Spirit world is showing. We welcome all of you who are tuning in live and those who will be tuning in later. And we honor the ancient ones. We honor the ancestors. We honor the beloved dead. And we invite you as we do our ceremony tonight to connect with us and deepen our understanding of the mysteries of life, death, and rebirth. And now Becky will share some announcements with us. Beloved dead full moon greetings. We are delighted that you're here or watching later. And we hope that you're going to join us for the upcoming Circle Sanctuary events. Circle Sanctuary Samhain Festival is this weekend, October 27th through the 29th. Selena will be doing a workshop on Gateways to the Other World on Friday afternoon and, weather and internet permitting, hopes to live stream it via YouTube. 
Please note that November 5th is the ending of daylight savings time and the clocks will move back an hour, which will give us an extra hour sleep, which means more daylight in the morning and less in the evenings. Monday, November 20th is Transgender Day of Remem Remembrance. Circle Sanctuary will be doing an online ritual at noon central time, as well as co-sponsoring an interfaith service in the Madison area of Wisconsin. Thursday, November 23rd is Thanksgiving. And our next full moon circles theme is giving thanks. And we will be broadcasting again on Monday night, November 27th. December 10th is Human Rights Day. And we need to send our prayers out to all those suffering in the world. May they get the food, the water, and liberty that we all need to survive and live well. Circle Sanctuary's Yule Festival will be on Saturday, December 16th, and our longest night observance will be at the time of the winter solstice on Thursday night, December 21st. We also have lots of great podcasts each month with close to a thousand previous broadcasts and podcasts available in our digital archives. And please support our community by becoming a Circle member or by making a donation on our website. Now, please check out our newly redesigned website for further information. Same address, just a different and pretty snazzy looking website. That's circlesanctuary.org. We are wishing you all a blessed Samhain this weekend. Shar will now cast the circle. Judith, would you like to prepare our circle with your song? I would. Thank you very much, Shar. Sawin, Sawin, let the ritual begin. We call upon our sacred ancestors to come in. Sawin, Sawin, we call upon our kin. We call upon our dear departed loved ones to come in. The veil between the worlds is thin. Our hearts reach across the sea of time to bring our loved ones in. Sawin, Sawin, we honor all our kin. We honor those who've gone before as the great wheel turns again. Sawin, Sawin, we call upon our kin. We call upon our sacred ancestors to come in. Sawin, Sawin, we call them to come in. We call upon our dear departed loved ones to come in. The veil is in between the worlds. Our hearts reach across the sea of time to bring our loved ones in. Sawin, Sawin, we honor all our kin. We honor those who've gone before and the great wheel turns again. Thank you, Shar, and you will now cast our ritual circle. Ah, the veil is thin at Sawin time. Um, commune with loving spirits. Remembering our beloved dead, honoring our ancestors, the circle is about to be cast. Please imagine a ring of light proceeding around you from one direction to the next, as they are called. Hail, spirits of air from the watchtowers of the east. We invoke you and request that you illuminate our sacred space and bring it the breath of life. Guardians of air, please protect all those who gather here in truth, love, and trust. Around we go to focus the energy and help it grow, to make protection sure and true, to guard us now in all we do, so mote it be. Hail, spirits of fire from the watchtowers of the south. We invoke you and we request that you illuminate our sacred space and bring it warmth. 
guardians of fire. Please protect all those who gather here in truth, love, and trust. Around we go to focus the energy and help it grow, to make protection sure and true, to guard us now in all we do, so mote it be. Hail, spirits of water from the watchtowers of the West. We invoke you and request that you illuminate our sacred space and wash it clean. Guardians of water, please protect all those who gather here in truth, love, and trust. Around we go to focus the energy and help it grow, to make protection sure and true, to guard us now in all we do, so mote it be. Hail, spirits of earth from the watchtowers of the north. We invoke you and request that you illuminate our sacred space and build it in strength. Guardians of earth, please protect all those who gather here in truth, love, and trust. Around we go to focus the energy and help it grow, to make protection sure and true, to guard us now in all we do, so mote it be. The circle is now cast as a light encircling you where you stand or sit, enfolding you within a ring of truth, love, and trust, and protection. And within this circle, we are between the worlds where night and day and life and death, the physical and spiritual, meet as one. This is the liminal state into which we welcome ancestor spirits who mean us well and do us no harm. Welcome. And to the great goddess, mother of all life and death, we acknowledge you with us in this liminal state. Blessed be. Richard. Thank you, Char, for casting our sacred circle. At this full moon time, we are recognizing our beloved dead. We call to mind our ancestors that have passed over. Just this morning, four of our presenters for this full moon circle were at Circle Sanctuary Nature Preserve at a burial. So we are all very mindful of those that have passed over. It is also time to note the dying of nature, the dead leaves that are collecting on the ground here in the Northern Hemisphere. I light this ecologically friendly recycled beeswax candle to represent the bonfires we pagan light on hilltops to celebrate the rising of the full moon, the return of the sun, and the warmth of the autumn. So mote it be. Up next is Judith to have us all light our individual candles. Yes, as Richard said, um, I invite all of the presenters here with us to hold up their candles to welcome you. Thank you for joining um, us in celebrating this, this blessed dead full moon circle. We send everyone blessings at this solemn time of year. Farewell to the old year as we welcome in the new. We acknowledge the 40th anniversary of our Circle Sanctuary land, which is such a precious place and resource for us, and where I hope the remains of my body will return to compost once my incarnation is done on this earth. So we give thanks. Selena will now give Samhain offerings for our beloved dead. Thank you. And I invite all of you who are joining in this ceremony, those of us here in the Zoom, those of you who are watching us live or later, call to mind one or more loved ones who have died that you seek to honor and connect with at this Samhain tide and at this beloved dead full moon time. I will make sounds on this singing bowl. I invite you 
to envision them, to whisper or speak their name wherever you are. Beloved dead, we call to you and honor you. Sawin, Sawin, the veil is thin. Come, spirit friends. Sawin, Sawin, the veil is thin. Come, spirit friends. Sawin. One of the old ways of honoring beloved dead ancestors at this sacred time is to set a place setting out and to take some of the food and the beverages that are being served at a Samhain meal and to create a spirit plate and a spirit cup. Some say the custom of trick-or-treating really has its origins in this tradition. It was said that if you honored and fed your beloved dead, you would be blessed in the year ahead. That's the treat. And if you forgot about it, or disrespected them in some way, well, you'd get some corrective feedback. So we want to honor our beloved dead tonight and at this Samhain time, I have on this plate some of the food that is being served tonight over at Circle Sanctuary Nature Preserve, which is on land that adjoins where Dennis and I have our home. And I took a bit of each of the dishes that were being served. And I went first in line, which is a tradition in some communities. And this plate will have some more things on it in the next few days. And then on Sunday, at the conclusion of our Samhain festival, this will be placed in our cemetery. We put a plate down and we pour a libation that has some apple cider and some water mixed in. And in honor of our member of our full moon circle, Christopher Beld, I have the candle that we kindled earlier today in his memory to connect with the element fire. I have a chant that can be done in a joyful way or in a solemn way. It's a simple chant and I invite you to consider using it if you take this tradition as part of your Ong observance. Beloved dead, come get fed. Beloved dead, come get fed. Beloved dead, Come get fed. So mote it be. And now I invite Reverend Laura to share a tradition from her heritage. Great to see you. Great to see you, Selena, and everybody. And I love this time of the year. You all know that I love this time of the year. And I am very happy to share about my about the traditions of Mexico and Central America, the Day of the Dead. Um, first of all, never forget, Day of the Dead is not Mexican Halloween, is not pagan, is not Samhain. With that out of the way, 
this time I asked Judith if I could speak about this wonderful, beautiful, masterful flower. And it was really moving to hear Charlotte speaking about the circle, talking about it being a liminal space. Because this little flower that you all know as marigold, it's actually a time machine. Oh, yes, it is. This little flower takes us, some say 3,000 years, some say 5,000 years. I don't know, I wasn't there. But it takes us back to our ancestors, the Mexica Tenochka people, the Mesoamerican people, so-called Aztec people. Our people have a very beautiful language that it was very blossoming. There was a lot of flowers and there was a lot of happiness on our language. And it was very metaphorical. That's why sometimes it's hard to say things directly. And along the metaphors of our language, it is the one of blooming, blossoming flowering. That is what they call living fully, existing, florecer, to bloom. That is the goal of humans, according to our people. It was to bloom. And in order to bloom, you need to be a seed. And after you're a seed, you need to be a seedling, you need to be a sprout. And then you bloom and you become a flower. And some of us will give fruit. And some of us are destined to not give fruit, but to share more, blo more blossoming. And then eventually, those flowers and those fruits will wilt away and will go back into the earth. And then that seed will become yet again a flower. See, there is no life without death, and death is part of life. And this little time machine goes back 3,000 years or more, because this is the flower that our ancestors use for the offerings, for the first offerings that were done, not when the Catholic uh, tradition came to Mexico, but way, way before, 2,000 years ago. And this is the connection to our ancestors, one of the many, and I like to call it a time machine, because when we set up the altars and we have the wonderful arches made with these flowers, well, some people will wear them, some people will paint them on their faces, etc. But this connects us to our ancestors of land, of culture, of blood, and it's also a, a speaking piece for you now. So you can set up your altar respectfully, learning and sharing the traditions of Day of the Dead and speaking about those who you remember. Because it's not that Mexicans are obsessed with Day of the Dead or dead or dying, is that we are obsessed with life and celebrating life and having joy in our lives. So bring flowers to your dead ones, bring flowers to the spirits and go time traveling. Thank you all for listening. And Shar, will you give us a ghost story, please? Oh, thank you, Laura. And I love the Marigold time traveler. Um, yeah, I've got some in my backyard. I will respect them differently. Um, Anyway, yes, ghost stories. Who here likes ghost stories? Ooh. You know, for me, this time of year is not so much about celebration of serial killers and crime scenes. I can do that the rest of the year because I'm into CSI. But it's about, you know, ghosts. And it's about honoring our beloved dead and feeling all that spooky, wonderful, paranormal, supernatural stuff. Okay, I will share with you all because I can in this crowd. I'm someone who's very sensitive to entities and uh, spiritual presences. I don't see as much as I sense um, and I connect with. And I've, uh, as a spiritual leader, I've been asked to come into many sites. Uh, as some as around this um, screen, I'm sure also have to sense things, to put uh, diseased spirits to rest, uh, that kind of thing. 
But I'm going to tell you a story about my own grand ancestor. It was the passing of my grandmother on my mother's side, uh, uh, Janet Fitch, and we lovingly called her Tai Tai. And Tai Tai um, is Indonesian for venerable one and Chinese for venerable one. Um, she spent a lot of time growing up in Asia, which is how she got that nickname. Um, and she studied at the Metropolitan School of Art in New York. She was a really excellent, excellent artist and commercial painter. She got a National Geographic Award uh, for her work. And she did a lot of beautiful Asian motifs um, from her childhood in China. She had studied with a Chinese uh, painting master who was um, pretty extraordinary. And she was so proud to show her um, her portfolio upon being accepted as a student. And you know how we all feel when we're like, see, see what I've done, see what I've earned, come. You know, she was so proud to display it to him. And he goes, she showed him this painting of a beautiful crane that she'd done a lot of detail. And he looked at it and he said, ah, go paint 100 cranes and bring me your 100th crane, and then we'll talk. And she was like, oh. but she did. She went out, she studied nature. She painted 100 cranes, and she brought him back the 100th crane. And he said, now we begin. So she taught me an awful lot in my life about discipline, consistent applied practice, about humility, about the joy of creativity that is buffeted by hard work and practice and humility and how it pays off if you really want artistry. So I had a lot of life lesson from her. And when I was a young child, she actually had a, a um, an artistic studio in the Watergate building. We all know Watergate, but she was down in the basement and um, she did a lot of stained glass and a lot of commissioned, you know, restaurant windows and things like that. And I was down there learning stained glass with her. And, you know, one time I was I was making a mess of some little thing that I was working on. And this man who was a colleague of hers came up and said, I'm sure your grandmother did not teach you to do it like that. <laughs> <laughs> and so it was that kind of thing where she was a perfectionist and she really taught me. So we had this kind of connection to her art, to this legacy. She was a mentor of mine. I was not there when she passed. I was in Seattle at the time. My mother had just divorced and was in Oregon. So she had some of my grandmother's art because my grandmother was on the East Coast living with my uncle. And she was very, very ill and had a little apartment of her own. She had passed at six o'clock in the morning, East Coast time, which would be three o'clock in the morning, West Coast time. And she, we were not able to be there. Um, she was on hospice. She went very quickly. She was surrounded by love, but she'd had to downsize her house a lot and a lot of her stuff. So my mom had a lot of her art. And guess what? It got shipped to me when my mom was moving. So here I had all of my grandmother's art packed up in my little cottage, like it should never be with me, but it was when I was going to school. So I was really sad. I wasn't able to be there with her. And the night after I heard about it, three o'clock in the morning, the witching hour. Remember landline telephones, everybody, when we had actual landlines? There was one on my nightstand right by my bed, three o'clock in the morning. And, and my roommate, in my cottage, who's in another room, had a phone as well. My phone goes, <laughs> didn't sound like my normal ringtone, but <laughs> I'm like, what? I wake up, I pick it up, no sound. Okay, hang it up. Next morning, I'm having coffee, and I asked my roommate, did you hear something go off about 3 o'clock in the morning? We said, no, no, nothing here. We were like, huh, I wonder if PG&E, or I guess it was Ma Bell in those days, I wonder if Ma Bell is, like, testing the phone line. Interesting. You know it's coming. Next night. Next night. 3 o'clock in the morning. The witching hour. I wake up again. Well, I'm, I'm getting a little freaked out. I'm like, okay, am I being stalked? What? So I pick up the phone again. I go, hello, hello, hello. Is someone there? And I hear kind of this. Ah. 
And I'm like, is this a prank call? I'm going to call the police if you call me back. I slam it down. Next morning over coffee. Okay. Did you hear this? I think someone's calling us. Let's really be alert to this now, okay? You know it's coming. Next night, third night now, three o'clock in the morning, the witch's hour. And I'm thinking, all of a sudden, it struck me, and I felt this wash of Tai Tai's presence. And I went, oh, my gosh. And I put it together. She died at six. It's three here. It would have been three. And I let it go on a little longer. After about six times as I picked it up and I went, Tai Tai. It's me, Char. I love you. Listen, you're freaking me out. I've got the art. It's all okay. <gasps> Next morning, I tell my roommate, I just, I just had this feeling. It was her. I told her, and I told her I have the art, and it's all okay. Yeah, it never happened again. It's never happened again. I know that was a liminal space over those phone lines. And my grandmother was trying to reach me and connecting with me there. And I'm sure she was probably concerned about the art, too. So there you have it. Not a trick, but man, I should have done something about that proactively. So, yeah. so every year I make sure when I put out my altar, I tell Tai Tai, the art is OK. I love you. It's all good. <laughs> Becky. Thank you. I love ghost stories. So I actually want to first lift up my grandmother. Um, my grandmother, her name was Betty Epps. She died 16 years ago on Halloween. Um, so it always just gives me um, a different feeling when Halloween approaches. But I'm going to talk about actually my mother-in-law. So several years ago, uh, my mother-in-law had been uh, suffering with cancer, and we received a call from my husband. His name is Raju. His brother called from South India and said, we need you to come. Mom's taking a turn for the worse. And Raju said, okay, well, it's going to take a while. So maybe a couple of weeks before I can fly out there. And his brother said, no, she just has a few days left. So uh, very next morning, he hops on a plane, flies out to India, and he got there just in time to say goodbye to his mom. And then within a few hours, she passed. Uh, I have a beautiful picture of her. You can see it. This is uh, Shamala uh, Eleganti. This was a picture of her from when she was a teenager. Um, so my husband called me. Um, well, he was there and he said, well, she died around um, very early in the morning. Uh, we, we figured she probably died late the night before, found her around one o'clock in the morning. So it was maybe around five, six a.m. there. And he said, well, the body's prepared. And so now neighbors, family, friends, everybody's coming over to view the body. And um you know, I'm from Northeast Wisconsin, so I have my own uh, views of what funerals are like and, and the mourning process. So I said, well, what exactly happens now? And he said, well, um, within a few hours, they're going to take her body to a nearby temple. They're Hindu and um, she'll be cremated. And then her ashes, the smoke will carry through through the archway of Lord Shiva and the belief is then that her soul is passed on. And I said, well, gosh, that's, that's fast. You know, she just died and you're already having this funeral. So, and it's so quickly and it's cremated and, and, you know, we usually have it for several days and then we do the body. And, and he said, that's not the funeral. We don't do that right away. So what they do is they, um, in a typical Hindu family, they would contact the priest, the Hindu priest, and um, using astrology, they determined the date of the funeral. So in his family's case, it was 10 days. So during that 10 days, 
they're encouraged to refrain from using the phone, from TV, from going out. Family, uh, friends, neighbors bring food. So they're, they're being fed, people are sharing stories, and it's a time for them to prepare for the funeral, but then also take some time to prepare themselves. And I really liked that. And when his family asked me, well, what do you do in America? And he said, well, it's usually a few days from what I have always known. It's been a few days, you have the funeral, and then you pull yourself up by the bootstraps and you continue on. And they said, how sad. And I thought, yeah. That is sad. We have this expectation that we have to move forward so quickly. And what I really liked is they said that after the 10 days, then they had the blessings, they had the prayers, they had the full funeral, and then they prepared his mother's favorite meal and they put it by the river. And then they waited as a family. They waited for a crow to come by. Their thought was the soul takes the form of the crow, and they wait for the crow to eat some of that food and fly away, because then they know her soul is not passed. And he said, you want that crow to fly, you know, pretty quickly, because otherwise you might think, oh, they're not coming. Did I do something wrong? So it could be hours, and they'll, they'll wait. But in her, their case, she came, and she flew away. And then a year later, they have a huge celebration with family and friends to mark the anniversary of the passing and then just celebrate life. And I just love how they take this year off to really reflect and to mourn because it's okay that we do that. We don't allow ourselves to do that. So I started to think about how I've handled death and how I handle it now. And I tell myself as elders in my family have been passing on that it's okay to mourn. It's okay to take some sick leave. It's okay to, maybe maybe I need to just take a week vacation and really just focus on me. Maybe put my phone down and just spend time reflecting on that person. And then to have a celebration of life a year later. Really like that. Just allowing ourselves to grieve and giving ourselves permission to, to um, not have to get over it so quickly. Um, so I hope that as we learn from other religions and other cultures that we can maybe apply some of that to our, our lives as well and, and give ourselves permission to just take a step back and think about our mental health. So mo to be. And now Andrew will play us a song on the guitar. You're muted, Andrew. There we go. Thank you so much, Becky. I think the song I'm going to share uh, flows very nicely from, from your sharing. And this is a song called Sail on Jimmy. It was written by an Irish um, composer and folk singer, Albert Nyland. And it's been um, covered by Christy Moore. Uh, Christy Moore is one of the more uh, well-known Irish singers, and uh, um, I just felt like this was a, a perfect song to share for Samhain. They laid out the body in that peaceful pagan home to pay their last respects all the neighbors came along in the wee hours of the morning pagan words from a whiskey still fall in from the bushes sworn enemies of friends again someone spilled porter on the corpse in the middle of the song and the stories kept on coming back from 1941. Save on, save on 
Pass it over to Mary. Thank you. Thank you so much. That was so wonderful. Sail on, Jimmy. Sail on. And now we're going to go into a meditation. The fortnight of the ancestors' autum autumnal harvest meditation. Credit for this meditation goes to my One Spirit Interfaith Seminary classmate and birthday twin, Reverend Yana Kapel, who presented this meditation to our One Spirit class in October 2022. So let us settle ourselves into a meditative mood. I invite you all to take a deep inhale and lift your arms up high, up over your head. Then gently exhale, slowly lowering your arms back to your side. Hmm, that was wonderful. Let's do that one more time. Deep breath in, arms up, 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 up. 
and exhale. Drop into your body, fully coming into a relaxed state, inviting spirit into your vessel. This meditation is in honor of Pitru Paksha, the Sanskrit word literally meaning the fortnight of the ancestors. It is a 16 lunar day period of homage to the ancestors through food offerings and prayer. In this Hindu tradition, no festivities are allowed and no new things are bought. Many cultures and spiritual traditions honor the harvest and offer ancestral veneration at this time of year. In a universal way, everyone is welcome to partake. This is the time of honoring and harvesting. I invite you to imagine the lives of those who have come before us and whose DNA you share. It is believed, and science is reinforcing, that we carry chemical memories in our being that gets passed in our DNA. Many traditions consider us all interconnected and that what we do affects seven generations forward and we are affected by our ancestors seven generations back. Just consider all those whose DNA we carry. There are ancestors who we know and probably even more ancestors we don't know at all. Yet we carry their stories, their dreams, their traumas through our shared DNA. As we go through this short meditation practice to connect, to gain understanding of the roots we have on this earth, I invite you to place your feet firmly on the ground and close your eyes unless you're driving. In this meditation, we are envisioning ancestors who in all their flaws and ways of being are showing up for you in this moment, in this healing meditation. In this meditation, they are present and supportive. You are safe and you are loved. Take a deep inhale and slowly, slowly exhale. And with your eyes closed, unless you're driving, picture your mother in your mind's eye. She is standing right behind you with her hand on your left shoulder. And beside her is your father with his hand on your right shoulder. Breathe and feel their presence and support. Then envision their parents standing behind them, your grandmother, your mom's mom, putting her hand on your mother's left shoulder and your grandfather, your ma's pa, putting his hand on her right shoulder. Now envision your paternal grandparents standing behind your father, your grandmother, your ma's pa, putting her hand on your dad's left shoulder, and your grandfather, your dad's dad, putting his hand on your father's right shoulder. Just breathe in as you feel their presence and, your, and their support. Your parents and grandparents, known or unknown, are with you, are supporting you. I invite you to start envisioning this line of ancestors as each generation steps in to add their support and presence. Envision yourself with your ancestors going back seven generations. 
That's more than 144 people behind you offering comfort and support. Take a deep inhale, connecting to all those whose names you know and honoring those whose names you don't know and may never know. But know they are all part of your legacy. Now, as you feel their presence, envision them forming a circle around you with you in the center. Briefly look at your 144 ancestors, seeing them with your spiritual eye, with your third eye, and with your heart. Seeing them not only in their human form, but as spirit, as love, as kindness. with all that is, everything they have carried, all that they have gone through, all the pain, all the dreams, all the joy, all the trauma, all the lives they have lived, so you can be here today so we can all be here together as you stand in the middle of this circle i invite you to turn in your mind's eye and look at each and every one of your ancestors and briefly connect with them knowing you can always come back to this meditation to spend more time with them as you wish. Allow your ancestors to communicate with you. Be open to receive all the love, the blessings, the messages, the support, the gratitude that comes from their higher self. This is their gift, their present to you. Take another deep breath and look at your ancestors. And if you have it in your heart, offer your gratitude, your love, your appreciation, your prayers, or whatever you feel your lineage needs offering this in this moment to this circle of your ancestors. Now place your hands on your heart. We offer thanks and gratitude to all our ancestors, to our guardians and guides, to the elements earth, air, fire, water, spirit, to the fish and the plants, the pollinators and insects, the two-leggeds and four-leggeds, the furry and the scaly, the herb medicines, the trees and the birds, to the wiggly and the slithery ones and the mycelium, the sun, the moon, the stars, the cosmos, and all those we have left unnamed. We are all interconnected and we are all made of stardust. We all share the same DNA. We are one. Thank you, ancestors, for your legacy. And may this continue the process of healing for the goodness of all. Please open your eyes and bow in gratitude. Amen. Ashe. Aho. Namaste. Selah. Shalom, and so it is. Reverend Selena. Thank you, Mary, for a wonderful meditation. So the phrase beloved dead has different categories, 
we have the ancient ones way back in time. And depending on your view of human life and origins, those that go way, way back. We have the ancestors. We have those who have been important in our life who have died. And then we have the beloved dead who have died in the past year. And one of our traditions with the Circle Sanctuary community at our Sawan gathering and at full moons and dark moons where individuals and sometimes as a group will also weave this in around Sawan tide is to speak the names of those in the community who have crossed over in the past year to have an altar with images, tokens of remembrance, or it might be writing their names on a card or inscribing it in a piece of wood. Um, it takes a lot of different forms. I have Chris, who is part of our full moon circle for many years when it met in person pre-pandemic and this picture was at our burial right today and will be at our community altars and the the huge space of our temple room there's lots of individual altars all honoring beloved dead and ancient ones and ancestors so his image will go with the recent dead, those who have died in the past year. Another tradition is to kindle incense as an offering. In addition to food and beverage, some people will kindle a light, will um, burn some incense, or have some other kind of offering. So I read the names of our community dead who have crossed over since the last Samhain time. Christopher Beld. Bud Young. Gary Bear Combs. Georgia Jones. Robert Wanaki and all those other ones that we have not yet known about. We call to you, we remember you, we honor you, we call to you, we remember you, we honor you, we call to you, we remember you, we honor you. Blessed be. And tonight, we focus on healing specifically sending healing to all of those who have lost loved ones, especially in the recent past, sending blessings of comfort, of support. Let us focus on remembering those who have lost loved ones in wars that are happening in different parts of the world right now. Let us send healing to those who have been killed in mass shootings, in other ways, 
those who have died as a result of mental health issues. Let us send healing to those who have died and their loved ones who are grieving. Displaced and impacted by climate change. And let us also send healing to all of us who are grieving the loss of species, of animals and plants, of ecosystems. Let us send healing to our planet. And I invite Chris to play some music for healing for us as we call to mind those who are grieving, those who have had loss. Thank you, Selena. My offering is a poem entitled Gloria Mundi, written by Michael Clever Diggs. I was introduced to this poem through the podcast Poetry Unbound, hosted by Padre Gotuma. If you enjoy poetry, read aloud with an Irish lilt, I highly recommend the Poetry Unbound podcast. Gloria Mundi. Come to my funeral dressed as you would for an autumn walk in the woods. Arrive on your schedule. I give you permission to be late, even without good cause. If my day arrives when you had other plans, please proceed with them instead. Celebrate me, there, keep dancing, tend your gardens, live well, don't stop. Think of me forever assigned to a period, a place, a people. Remember me in stories, not the first time we met and not the last, a time in between. Our moment here is small. I am too, a worldly thing among worldly things. One part per seven billion. Make me smaller still. Repurpose my body, mix me with soil and seed. Compost for a sapling. Make my remains useful, wondrous. Let me bloom and recede, grow, 
and decay. Let me be lovely, yet temporal. Like memories, like mahogany. Then Charbert will open our circle. Thank you, thank you, thank you, everybody. So the circle is about to be opened. Um, you know, I, I invite you to prepare your home circles and altars uh, to continue this creation of liminal space of your own to honor your own beloved dead using the symbols, stories, and songs of your traditions that make rich meaning for you and yours. Now, as for this circle here, we give thanks to the goddess for watching over us in life and death and guiding us in truth, love, and trust. We love you. We thank you for being with us always and in all ways. Blessed be. We give thanks to our ancestors who guide us and who protect us throughout the year in truth, love, and trust. Remain if you wish. Go if you must. We remember you. We cherish your positive legacy. Blessed be. We give thanks to the guardians of the watchtowers of North, West, South, and East. We thank you for your protection and participation in our sacred circle. Remain if you wish. Go if you must. We honor you. Blessed be. By the earth that is her body and by the air that is her breath and by the fire of her bright spirit and by the living waters of her womb and by her spirit that spins the life cycle. The circle is open but unbroken. May the joy of the goddess live ever in our hearts. Mary meet and Mary part and Mary meet again. Blessed be so mote it be. And as we hold our candles up, let us carry with us the memory of our connecting with each other, the light that is our bright spirit, the light that connects us with other dimensions, the light of peace, healing, hope, love, and the full moon. May we depart and continue our spiritual journeys and connections with each other. Thank you all for being part of our beloved dead full moon circle. We give thanks to the bright moon and the Samhain Tide, and for those of you in the Southern Hemisphere, the Beltane Time, for Samhain and Beltane each share release and rebirth. So mote it be, blessed be, Awen. Thank you for joining us this full moon for this full moon circle broadcast tonight which has been brought to you by Circle Sanctuary's amazing volunteers. Volunteers are a vital force in keeping Circle running, but we also need your donations for the upkeep of the sanctuary land and its buildings, as well as our green cemetery. We wanna keep the lights on, the doors open, and the roof over our temple room and resource shop. You're also invited to become a member at whatever giving level is most comfortable for you in support of Circle's in-person and virtual festivals and rituals, our informational website, as well as a wide variety of weekly Circle Sanctuary Network podcasts, CSNP. We have close to 1,000 podcasts archived and available for you online. For more information, please visit our website, circlesanctuary.org, and join us by becoming a member or by making a donation today. And join us again next month for our Giving Thanks Full Moon Circle on Monday night, November 27th. Same bat time, same bat place. Wishing you all a very blessed Samhain. <laughs>